Hello, and welcome to another BlenderWiz video tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to model a grand piano. This will be the first of two episodes in the grand piano tutorial series. Let's begin by getting some reference images. I have some fairly decent images ready to go. If you are working to find your own, or planning to find your own anyway, make sure that they are fairly orthographic, otherwise the dimensions of the piano will be distorted by the camera. Also, just a note, that patents are a very good one to look at for orthographic images. Uh, the links to the reference images that I use will be in the section below. So let's go ahead and start grabbing our images. Hit N to bring up the properties panel. Let's check background images and click add image. So this will open up an empty background image slot. If we go into orthographic by hitting five on the numpad then side view mode on the by hitting uh, three on the numpad, we will then see, once we insert the image, we will see the image show up. So click open, and then I'm just gonna go over to my resources. The first image that we're gonna work with is the side view. So after we import it, we can see it now. We'll only see it from the side view or the front view or really the top view because we haven't defined which axis we want to see it on. So let's do that now. Set it to right. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the size to 1. And then reposition this. But first, let's bring in the other image. I'm also going to delete that cube to get it out of our way. So let's bring in the other top view image. Open that up. Now if we go into top view, we can see that we have the top view. Now we also need to scale this one down to size 1. Now if we turn this, we'll notice that they don't quite line up everywhere. So what we want to do is we want to push this back so it's lined right up with the z-axis and push this one back so it's lining up with the x-axis. So this will be a good way to start off. Also, for the side view, we will want to raise it so that the wheels are sitting right on the y-axis. So, to push this back, um, I figured that it's 0.471 along the x, which will get us fairly close to the axis there. And then, for the height, we're going to want to set it to 0 0.976. Uh, to find these numbers, just play around with the uh, image if you're using your own. And that should really do it for this image. So I'm just going to press this little arrow, and it's going to shrink it down. Now, we need to do the similar thing to the top here. So uh, for the x, we can just leave it at 0. That's fine. For the y, though, we're going to need to set it to 0 0.399. Or 0.399. There we go. And the scale is actually a little bit too big. If we put our 3D cursor on the back there, it's actually off of our piano here. So we actually have to scale this down. And it's only a little bit, so 0 0.932 for the scale, and that should line everything up just right. So now this is working out nicely. If we put our 3D cursor there and go into top view mode, it's perfectly on that edge there. And finally, if we put our 3D cursor on the back there, it's pretty well right on the back. We can begin modeling the piano now. Let's start with the walls of the cabinet. There are a few techniques, uh, and they will all get you the final result. Uh, you can either just model it piece by piece, or you can use a curve, and we will be using that. So. Let's go ahead and grab a Bezier curve, tab into the edit mode, let's rotate it by negative 90 degrees, ah, rotate, rotate negative 90, there we go, and let's just line everything up along the X, so it's just a straight line. Now let's just drag this over, take this one there, let's just put it down maybe right here. And then 
pull this one back. It appears that the top on this piano here is too large for the actual frame, so we will just deal with that. Okay, and then by hitting Control and then clicking, we can have it create another uh, segment. Control click. And then it's very easy to get the same sort of shape as the piano. A lot easier than if we were to just be modeling it. Don't forget that the uh, top is slightly larger than the main cabinet. So let's just bring these edges in a little bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, let's get everything all lined up. Okay. So there we kind of have an edge that looks like the piano. Um, we may want to push this around a little bit more. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. I think I want to pull this in a little bit. There you go. And once you are happy with it, just bring in a cube. Let's tap into edit mode, scale it down, scale it up along the Y. Let's bring it in a little bit more along the X, and then use hit Control R to create loop cuts, and just scale it up, or by rotating up on the uh, mouse wheel, we can create more. And once you get something that looks kind of like that, it should be good. Let's go ahead and give it a curve modifier now. Set the object to the Bezier curve, and I guess rotate it. Well, there we go. So obviously this is not large enough, so let's just scale it along the Y. And that's because uh, we have it moving or deforming along the Y axis. There we go. Let's go ahead and set the shading to smooth. Hit Control 1 to bring in a uh, subsurf modifier. Let's tab into edit mode here and put in two loop cuts by hitting Control R. Two more loop cuts there. Hit S and then X. There we go. Just going to tighten this up a little bit more. And then just a loop cut there. And another loop cut there. Okay, so that is looking pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, I think... It is pretty well ready to have the modifier applied. So make sure to make any changes to the curve now, because once we apply the uh, the curve modifier, it won't be very much fun to go in and fix anything. So once you're happy, click apply, and now the mesh is kind of stuck in this form. Let's go ahead and reposition the or the uh, center there. So tab into edit mode, select all the vertices, hit shift s, cursor to selected. 
once the cursor is kind of in the middle, hit Control Alt Shift C, kind of a crazy little uh, hotkey, and then Origin to 3D cursor, and then I'll just plop that right in there. I think it does pretty much the same thing with center of mass. Anyway, that's what I do. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, now, let's actually line this up properly. Scale it up a little bit. There we go. Just so that it fits the piano. So that is looking pretty good. Um, now, let's go ahead and start getting these uh, curves in here. Oops. There we go. So I'm actually just going to go in here and delete. Maybe not delete. Let's pull these down. Hmm. Well, what we can do, let's delete these edges here. Okay, throw in a loop cut here. Let's go around to the inside as well. Throw in yet another loop cut. And let's line them up. There we go. Hmm. This is going to be a little bit challenging here. So, hit E, and let's just rotate this up so that it follows this curve here. Hmm, it's not quite lined up properly, which is making things a little bit more difficult. So with these vertices here, these vertices here, right now we're just going to line everything up. Just hit S, Y, and then 0, and that'll line those up. Let's do that for uh, these vertices. Right now I'm just pressing uh, C to do the circle select. There we go. And that'll just help clean things up a little bit more. There we go. Easier to tell what's going on. And that should be good enough. Okay. So now it should be easier to just... Uh, Copy that, rotate those, line them up with this there. If we uh, reposition our cursor and hit Alt-R, let's bring up this panel here. Go negative maybe 45, I don't know. We can change where the center is, it shouldn't matter along the X but it will matter along the Y and the Z. So once we re reposition the thing along the Y, it will, or once we get everything all set up along the Y and the Z, um, we can get it looking fairly good. It's a little bit jumpy. And then once we're happy with that, I'm gonna turn down the number of steps, quite a few. So, there we go. Let's bring those into the same Z. There we go. So that's looking fairly decent. And now, if we just reconnect those there, Good. Oops. Make sure to have the right face or right vertices selected before you create a face, otherwise you'll get some fairly weird results. So 
So that is looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and grab these again. We're going to have to do the same thing to the other side. So I may just pause the video there and yeah. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's bring that along the Y. Okay. Let's reconnect these vertices up in this area. Looking good. We need a loop cut there and a loop cut there. Okay, so let's connect up these vertices, these ones, and there we go. That's looking pretty, pretty decent. Let's fix up this side now. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video so you, that you don't have to watch me do that again. There we go. And that is how it will look when you're done. Okay, so next up, let's uh, work on the top. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of the vertices along the top here. And let's just duplicate them, hit P to separate them, and then let's just hide our little uh, our little piano walls there. Now, let's actually just take these bottom vertices here and flip them up so that they're facing upward. Okay. And actually, let's uh, go ahead and we should probably delete them instead. So let's do that. Okay, there we go. Now that we have that, I believe since uh, we had this all come from a rectangle, that we should be able to just connect these across like so. And hopefully everything will line up nicely. If it does, that's good for us. If not, well, we'll have to deal with that later. And if we have it in edge select mode, we can just go boom, boom, and have it be a little bit faster. Hmm. Maybe this won't line up very nicely. I was hoping it would, but it won't. Okay, so this comes to being more of a challenging spot. Um, do want these two vertices, or those two coming together. There. I think we can just triangulate those in. Actually, we got a quad in there. That's awesome. And there we go. That's not too bad looking. And now it should be fairly easy. We got three, three. Good to go. And don't forget, we still have this tiny little ledge right there. There we go. And now we're going to need to put in two uh, edge loops, like so. 
And there we go. There is the top of the piano. Uh, not quite yet, though. <laughs> uh, we need to uh, give it some depth. So I'm actually going to take this top here and duplicate it, move it up along the Z. Hopefully it's not that thick, because that would be enormous and quite heavy. But there we go. And now what we got to do is we need to hide most of this stuff. Let's hit Control tab and then change it to face select mode and just hide all of these inner faces here. Let's do that again down here. And this will just make it easier for us. Oops. Now we can select those inner edges, hide those, and that is good. Okay, let's hide those guys. And now, we just go along the edges and fill in the faces. Shouldn't take you too long, hopefully. You could use an N-Gon here, but I prefer not using N-Gons where I can avoid it. And then the little guys, right here and here. There we go. I think we still have to do that on this side as well. Right there, there, ta-da! So there's a little bit of a lid. Um, we still need to give it the front though, so let's do that. Looks like we may have a slight issue here. Hmm. Don't know what's going on there, but we'll figure it out. So now we just fill in these faces. like that, and then let's have it recalculate the normals. Should clean everything up and make it look pretty good. And hmm, I think that the top is looking pretty good. Let's make sure it all lines up nicely with the bottom piece there. And it does. Now we're actually going to do something very similar to the uh, for the inside. So let's go ahead and tab into edit mode there. And I'm just going to deselect along the outside here by holding down the middle mouse button and using the circle select tool. Oops. This part can be a little bit tedious. I think if we just go into face select mode, we can just deselect by holding down the right or control, not control, shift and alt, and then right clicking. And then let's just hide the entire top. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to hide these guys. And that is because we only want the bottom here. So let's hit Shift D, P to duplicate it. And then let's grab that new piece, just drag it down a little bit. Right about there. And that is the bottom of our piano cabinet. Now that we have that, I want to work on creating the insides. Um, so to save time and hopefully not crash your computer, 
I'm just going to make it kind of an electric piano. So we're just going to have some speakers in here and a nice board over the top. Um, if you wanted to create all of the interior parts, my other piano that I created a while ago, it has well over a million vertices and it definitely takes its toll on your computer. So, um, yeah, just going to create a simple, somewhat simple, electric piano. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom uh, floor of our piano here, duplicate it by hitting Shift D, and let's just drag it up along the Z axis, right about, I don't know, to there. And then let's take these front vertices here. Make sure you're in orthographic mode just to make sure everything all lines up nicely. And let's just drag this back. And make sure it's fairly far back because we're going to have another board in here that uh, goes in between this interior part here and the keyboard itself. So that is looking pretty good. Um, we're going to get to play with the Boolean modifier today, I think. So uh, I want to put a speaker probably back here, two speakers here and here, maybe a few speakers in there. I don't know. Um, let's put a Let's bring in a cylinder, tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit optimal display, and that will just decrease the number of uh, edges that we see. There we go. Oh, well, uh, that kind of hit all of them, didn't it? Maybe you turn that off. So where are the edges, actually? So if we scale this down, We want to try getting this inside of this square here, and that will give us the best results. So I'm just going to slide these over. <laughs> Actually, if we just reposition this where we want it, so I guess this can be a like a subwoofer. <laughs> subwoofer on a piano. Interesting concept. There we go. And since this is flat, no matter how we drag this, it will look fine. Okay. And now, if I recall, when using the Boolean modifier, we uh, select this one, and then the piano soundboard itself, hit uh, space, add modifier, and let's bring in the Boolean. Where is that? Right there. Okay. And should be the difference. Hmm. See, we got a few escaping vertices here. We want to make sure all of these little cracks are right inside there. So that's looking pretty good. If we hit apply, it'll get screwed up. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's apply that, and then I'm just going to take this top here, and let's actually just delete it. So that's looking pretty good for a nice hole there, and that is how you drill a hole through something, by the way. And now let's have two speaker holes, right, maybe not here, but up in here. So maybe in those areas. So let's create another cylinder. Scale that down. Should look pretty good there and there. OK. And now let's just move these uh, vertices around until the uh, cylinders are inside of the bounding box. And let's go and throw in another boolean. The difference. And throw in maybe another boolean with the other. Set it to difference. If we apply these, 
it'll get all screwy. Oops. We just want those tops to disappear, so delete that. And it should look pretty good. Then if we apply that, and delete those tops there, it'll look pretty good again. So let's delete those holes, or those hole generating cylinders, so we don't need them anymore. Okay, so that's looking fairly decent. Um, looks better if we can't see the wires. The boolean is not a very clean method of breaking stuff, uh, so you want to deal with all of your meshes before you use the boolean, but once it's done, it gives you some fairly nice looking holes. So now with these holes all selected, maybe one at a time, let's just extrude them down. And then let's sharpen that up. And then let's actually just turn up the mean crease. Ooh, looks like we're escaping a little bit right in there. Turn up the mean crease. And that will sharpen everything up nicely too. Maybe, maybe not. That looks fine. <laughs> If you can't get it, just forget it. So, there we go. Let's take these vertices there, bring them down. And as the number of subdivisions goes up, those will start looking better. What we probably should have done was put in a, or separate them a little bit. I'm considering going back over this and doing that. So those look pretty, well, I don't, I don't particularly like them. Let's undo them. So easiest way, just select the, the circles. So circle select, circle select, delete. And since this outer one is just a square, we can just fill that in, and boom, there we go. Alrighty. So, let's see, are there any other ways of going about this to get a nice result? Um, Well, we can get rid of this edge for one. And probably this edge, too. Okay. Thinking maybe just one circle or one speaker there. And the smaller you make the bounding box, or the closer, the cleaner your mesh will remain after the boolean is applied. So let's just scale that down. Right about there. Okay. But you gotta make sure that there's enough space in between your uh, cylinder and the outer walls, otherwise it'll start kind of leaking. And that doesn't look good either. See, like that. Okay, so that's not terrible. Apply that boolean. Delete that right there. Okay, looking good. So 
So, I guess we're only going to have two speakers. Um, in the end, I don't think we'll actually notice because we'll be putting a cover plate over the top of these. So, let's uh, actually work on those right now. So by taking these circles here, let's duplicate them, hit P, separate by selection, and I'm just going to put the cursor, oops, shift S, cursor 2 selected. Let's scale that up just a little bit, and then I'm going to lower it. Actually, let's bring it up even And this is just going to be the speaker cover. So let's bring that in, down, and then you're going to have your shield, which is going to be right there. Let's bring that in. And then we'll make another speaker the actual speaker underneath this cover. So let's take this lower ring here, hit P to separate it by selection. Let's hide the cover now and make the actual speaker itself. Let's scale that up. That should be lower than the wood or our soundboard here. I guess it's not really a soundboard, but it's just for aesthetics. And then we can just make our speaker. So uh, let's see, what does a speaker look like? Speaker kind of comes down. This is sharp. Goes in. Right like so. And then it has a little section in the middle that goes in. And then it has a dome. And that dome is for high pitch noises. Oops. Well then, there we go. That's kind of a speaker. So if we unhide that stuff, the speaker doesn't have to be too good looking because we obviously have our mesh over the top. And actually, I'm just going to take this speaker assembly here, duplicate it, drop it in over the top of that hole here, and, well, I don't know why the edge is over there. Let's fix that. Control alt shift c origin to center of mass. Let's do that again for the speaker itself. There we go. So that's pretty good. Take that, let's scale it up. So that's big enough to cover our hole. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. We're going to start working on the actual keyboard next. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I found a reference image for an actual keyboard. Here are the numbers to make it fit with our current piano. So move it over to 0 0.281 along the X, 0 0.704 along the Y, and scale it down to size 0 0.516. And that should fill in. If you're still having issues with the other piano taking over, just hit the little eyeball and make it kind of close its eye, and you won't be able to see it anymore. So that's kind of fun. Uh, so let's actually start working on the wood and parts that go around the keyboard first. So bring in a new plane. Let's tab into edit mode here. Bring it down along the Z. And maybe push it back a little bit. We should probably split it right down the middle. Delete one half here. Add in a mirror modifier. Probably the easiest way to go anyway. That clearly is not in the middle. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so that's pretty fun.
Okay. And now... Hmm. There's a little bit that sticks out past the end of the piano. Usually. And it just comes down. And back in a little bit. Uh, it's depending on the piano, really. If you don't want to do this, feel free not to. Uh, I just, I kind of like how it looks. Oops. If you still have the pivot point set to the uh, origin, hit comma and that will get you out of there. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. So that's good to go. Let's throw in a few loop cuts to clean it up. So one right there. I think that linked up nicely. I hope it did. Oops. And we'll just want to align everything. Okay. Then just take these vertices here, link them up like so, and there we go. Looking pretty good. Hit Control one to add in a uh, shoot a subdivision modifier. Then we can just take this loop cut here, hit double tap G, and then it'll kind of pull it forward. Let's throw in a loop cut here to sharpen things up. Like so. Looks like something may have broken. Ho ho ho. That's not what we want. There we go. Yeah, we should probably fill in the rest of this along here. I'm going to delete this edge there. Don't need it. We fill that in, that in. It's good to go. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, we will need to bring this out so that it's actually not leaving a huge gap. If we actually just bring this all the way out, that'll work too. Once again, this depends on what kind of piano you want to make. And then the fun part of just throwing in edge loops to sharpen everything up. And, oops, keep doing that. If you hit Control R while in object mode, apparently it will uh, take you and add the object to a rigid body world. Which, if you want to learn more about, uh, we've got a tutorial on that that I did last week. So let's set that shading to smooth, and there is kind of the basis of our keyboard. Now um, we actually need to create the little separator that goes in between the outside part and the wall itself. There's going to be another one over here, right like that. Okay, so really all this is we just take those, hit E, and then Z, and go up about half the width of a key, half the depth. Let's just sharpen these up, like so. Okay, and then throw in a loop cut there. Loop cut here. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hide the main piano now. Kind of in our way. 
I'm just going to delete these back faces just because no one's ever going to see them. So they aren't very necessary. There we go. Just clean things up a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. Let's unhide the keyboard there. Not the keyboard, but the piano. Now we need to make the backboard that goes in between the piano and the keyboard. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to bring in a uh, cube. Let's tab into edit mode, scale that sucker down. Scale in along the Y maybe. Let's tab out edit mode. Pull that back a little bit more. This keyboard should go back beyond this little marker here. So I'm just going to pull it back. Okay. And now I'm just going to pull this up, this one down. The wonderful thing about 3D is we can make things intersect that couldn't normally intersect, like this. So we're going to need a thing in here. Delete half. Oops, not the faces. Vertices. Add in a mirror modifier. And let's uh, align this all up. So apparently, our uh, reference image isn't far enough back. So let's fix that by just pushing it back a little bit more. Let's hide that. And there we go. So we can pull these ones back with a decent amount of ease. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, Let's start creating stuff on our uh, piano, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So right now it doesn't look all that interesting. Well, first of all, this looks a little bit thin to me, so I'm just going to take this and just scale it up along the Z. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. If you get it peeking through too much, don't be afraid to just pull that in, like so. Okay, so that's looking pretty decent. I'm going to hide that camera, or move it to the second layer. There we go. And we don't need to see that easier curve anymore, so let's hide that as well. And then, if we go ahead and throw in a loop cut here, maybe a loop cut here, cut here, and another one here. If we take these faces, hit I, we can take them and pull them back in along the Y. Maybe I again. get kind of a raised panel look. I kind of like that. It's a little bit fancier than just a plain background. So that's looking pretty good. Um, hmm. Yeah, so let's hide that top. We're going to create the board that comes back here now. And we need to pull this forward a little bit. There we go. So let's create that board. Selecting those two vertices, hit cursor to selected, tab out at edit mode. Let's add in another cube, tab into edit mode there. Let's throw in a loop cut there. 
duplicate, or not duplicate, delete the vertices. And we will add in a mirror modifier. Awesome. Let's scale that down along the Z. Leave a little bit of a gap. And then, hmm, depending on how you want to do this board, uh, we will deal with that later. So, yeah, let's create the actual keys. Now, um, if you want to create a very detailed keyboard, you can model out each key and actually like break them where the uh, black keys go but I'm not going to because that's a lot of work. So let's create a cube. Tab in the edit mode, let's scale it down. Let's actually put it on the keyboard where it goes. <laughs> Silly keys. Bring it up and drag it back, right like so. That's a little bit tall. Hmm, maybe not. Oops. I feel like this here could be brought up a little bit. Like so. Let's throw in another loop cut there. And actually, now that nothing over here is showing, we can just take all of these vertices and delete them, and no one will ever know. So there we go. Awesome. That's looking pretty good. So that is a basic key. Uh, let's go ahead and delete the back face and the bottom face. and then throw in a loop cut here. And we'll just take this, extrude it out a little bit. And that is good. And really, now just add in a uh, array modifier. Let's turn this around. Turn up the offset just a tiny bit. So negative uh, 1.01 .01 maybe, or something kind of like that. The more you do, the more noticeable the cracks between the keys will be. So let's turn that up. Okay, so that's looking decent. Hmm, could run into a little bit of trouble here. Well, maybe not. Hmm. We may have to chop off a key, but that's okay. No one will notice. Or we can just pull this key over. We'll deal with it later. Okay, let's create the black key now. So that should go right in, right about there. Tab out of edit mode. Insert a new cube. Let's scale that down. Let's delete that face there and the back face. Really all we're doing right there is just uh, 
When we do that, we're just lowering the number of polygons, so it'll render faster, because no one will actually see them, so it's okay to do that. Okay, and what we should have done is hit Control one and given it a loop cut, like so. Okay, do the same to this one. And let's actually bring that up a little bit. bit more, and maybe bring these vertices down a little bit. The keys actually stick out a fair bit on the keyboard, so you want to take that and deal with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we can do another array modifier here. Slide it over. Turn that up to 3. If we apply that, we can duplicate. Actually, no. Hmm. Yeah, we can duplicate that. Slide it over. Let's delete this guy there. Set these all to one object. Add in another array. Let's uh, slide this over like so. Now if we just turn up the number, or the count, and holding down shift will make Blender behave a little bit more nicely. It'll go in smaller increments. And then we actually need to take one of these keys, duplicate it, hit P to separate it, Get rid of the array. Whoa. No, no, no. Where is that? Let's undo that. There we go. Get Take one of these keys. Shift D. Hit P to separate it by selection. Now you get this one here. Get rid of its array. There we go. Slide it down along the X, because unfortunately we can't get that last key in there just using the R array. So there we go. We now have our keyboard looking fairly good. And let's set those to smooth shading, and that should be good to go. We're going to go ahead now and create the music sheet holder. So um, this is going to go right in, in here. I actually kind of want to inlay it into our board here. So let's go ahead and first hop over to the first or second layer, or whatever layer doesn't have an object on it. There we go. And bring in, I don't know, let's move our cursor first to the center. Bring in a cube. That should be good. Scale that down along the Z. Okay, let's cut it in half delete half of it add in an um, or add in a mirror modifier let's bring it down along the y a little bit there we go and of course turn on clipping there we go okay so this is going to be fun um yeah just make it any shape you want really thinking I might go with a classic appearance. Oops. There you go. And of course, make sure it's thin enough so that it looks realistic. 
maybe a little bit thicker. There we go, and let's uh, set it to smooth shading and bring it back over to our first layer. Okay, now we gotta scale this down. Maybe a little bit up a little bit. There we go. Let's put our cursor right in the center there. And then hit Shift S, Selection to Cursor, and that will just bring our object right there. Let's bring it out along the Y, so that's right in the middle there. And something kind of like that. And now let's go ahead and actually cut out the uh, chunk that it will inlay into. So let's get rid of these two faces. Faces. And now I'm just going to scale this one down along the Z as well. Bring it up. There we go. So now if, uh, depending on where we put the hinge, let's just see where it's going to be good. If we position our cursor where we think a good hinge position would be and press period, we can test that. And I don't know if that would work very well. That one might work. Maybe right about there. Okay, so that's good. Um, hmm. We may want to put a little, I don't know, something in there. Just so that it doesn't uh, doesn't fall all the way through. It's getting a little bit hard to see stuff. So let's go ahead and hide our piano keys. Pretty much anything that we don't need. There we go. Okay. And let's just hit E to extrude. Scale those in. It's going to rip a little bit. Let's actually bring it out along the Y. This I forgot we have our cursor on. Hit comma. Turn that off if you want. Let's delete those faces there. Select our vertices. Drag them over. I forgot to turn on clipping. Let's do that now. And there we go. We've created a little edge that our piece can sit on when it's not in use anyway. And we may want to bring this one out a little bit more. So, there we go. This one doesn't matter too much. There we go. Okay. So it looks like the best place to put our hinge is right along there. So tapping out of edit mode, if we bring out maybe a cylinder, oops, bring in a, delete that, okay, bring in a cylinder, turn down the number of vertices to something like 8, and then we can rotate this 90 degrees along the Y, scale it way down. There we go. This is just going to be that hinge pin. Pull this back a little bit. Scale this up. Depending on how you want your hinge, um, there are different styles of hinges, obviously. So that looks fine. There we go. 
and we'll probably need a some sort of object back here to hold it up. So let's bring in a plane, tab and data mode, scale that down. Let's rotate it. There we go. And then, of course, we should probably have some ledge or something for them to set their music on. There we go. Something kind of like that. And if you want to go even further, we can bring this edge up here. Just extrude that up. And that'll stop the music from sliding off of their stand. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. So now if we take these vertices and double tap, hmm, double tap G, that should be working. Double tap Y, and now you can change how uh, tall that stopper is. I'm just going to throw in another loop cut, and that it is definitely getting a bit harder to see. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We're going to go ahead now and open up the top, so, and then uh, set up the peg, and then we will, of course, work on the feet. So, how we're going to do this, we're just going to select this corner here, hit Shift-S, cursor to selected, hit period to uh, rotate around the uh, pivot point, and then just rotate this up, holding down Control to snap it to every 5 degrees, and 35 looks pretty good to me. We're going to do pretty much the same thing we did for the back of our uh, music stand here, and that, let's... Uh, I don't know. Let's put the stand up to there. Let's bring in another plane, tab and edit mode, scale that down. Let's rotate it 35 degrees. And then there we go. actually move this over a little bit so that it's going down all the way. Like so. And then let's fix this up here. Okay. I'm going to scale this down. And there's our stand. So now let's create the uh, feet for the piano. Let's turn off that keyboard there and turn on the sides. Actually, we don't need the top view because we're done with the top. So let's uh, bring in a... There are a couple ways that we can do this. Let's do a cube here, or a plane. I like planes. Planes are cool. And depending on how you want to do this, or where you want your feet selected. I'm just going to put them there. That looks good. Okay. And then we can scale that in. Pull that out a little bit more, maybe. Not that far though. Okay. And 
And then to get this curve, we're just going to pull this down, put in a loop cut there and there, grab those like so, pull those down. Just going to pull this in a little bit more. There we go. Grab that. If it doesn't look too small to you, uh, go ahead and just scale it in a little bit. Maybe a little more along the X. Down like so. It'll actually go right about to there. And scale that in. So that is one leg. Hit Control 1 to add in a uh, modifier, subsurf modifier. Delete those faces. And now we're just going to sharpen some things up. So sharpen like so. Actually, let's sharpen those up and sharpen these up. Boom. There we go. Got quite a bit of sharpening to do. That's looking pretty good already. Okay. Maybe another set of loop cuts there. Just to curve it a little bit more. Looks, yeah, we missed this bottom, but that's not a problem. There we go. And now let's just set the shading to smooth, and that's looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, let's add in a mirror modifier, although we should probably first, let's uh, add in an empty so that we can mirror it. Mirror it. So let's call this one center. There we go. <laughs> um, mirror. And there you go. Is now mirrored. So that's looking fairly decent. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's do the back here. So it's going to be right under right under here. So let's put the cursor right in there. Actually, it won't be right there. It will be... Let's hide our top so that we can see what we're doing. There we go. That'll be right back there. So let's plop our cursor in there. Hit Shift-A, create a new mesh. Tab into edit mode, scale that down until it's the right width. Unfortunately, we don't have it from the front view, but that's okay. We can pretend. Pretending is always good. Just line it up. It will probably end up fairly square when you're done, so that's a good indication that you're doing it right. So probably bring that in a little bit more. Scale this up slightly. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then There we go. And let's just take that down all the way. So there's that back foot. If we hit Control-1, we can get in a subsurf modifier. Let's delete that top face there and add in a few loop cuts to just clean things up a bit. There 
And that's looking fairly good. Still need to add a few more loop cuts in. So sharpen that up. Those guys up. Double tapping G will continue the edge slide. And that is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and add in a two loop cuts there. Take this top loop cut, GG. This one, bottom one here, GG. And that'll just sharpen up that crease right in there. I'm actually going to pull this forward so that it's not screwing up with our wall here. And that pretty well does it for the modeling of the piano. We still need to uh, add a few more things though, like the casters and the pedals. So let's do those. That will be fairly centered. So let's grab the center here. Cursor to selected. Let's actually push it back a little bit more. And we will want, let's do a cube. Scale that down. Let's bring it down a little bit more. It's actually going to go back here. There we go. Just get it to the right shape. Okay, and now I guess we can make the uh, the posts that go up into the bottom of the piano. So cursor two selected. Let's add in a another cube. Scale that down. Pull it over. Let's actually throw in a middle loop cut there. Delete half of them. Let's move our cursor right there, and then. Got to tab out of edit mode, hit Control alt shift c origin to 3D cursor. Let's add in a mirror modifier and turn on clipping. Okay. So now that we have that, we can just raise this up into the bottom of the piano. Now most of the legs are fairly ornate and they've got lots of little creases in it, so we should probably do the same for the posts. So I'm just going to add in two loop cuts, try to line it up with that back there. Bring that up to about there. Hit E, and then scale it in. Of course, hold down sh or press down Shift Z to stop it from scaling along the z-axis. There we go. And then, let's go up to this top face here, bring it down along the z. Hit E, let's scale it out, E, z. Let's bring it out again. And up into the piano. Let's delete that face, and then hit Control-1. Let's delete that bottom face there, and let's sharpen things up a bit, like so. I'm going to hide the mirror modifier, that way we can actually see what we're doing over on this last side. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's add in a few loop cuts down here to sharpen this pedal box up. Okay, and now what we're going to do is the pedals are kind of these levers that go all the way through. So let's go ahead and cut this up. I don't know if 
we want three sections, so that's going to be one. And then, since they never go all the way to the side, let's just cut it up like so. and delete those faces. And let's do that again on the back. There we go. And now let's just connect all of these faces up. Hopefully this comes out looking good. And then we'll just sharpen up these vertices with a loop cut. Whoa, not there. Not there either. That's a tough little one to get. It like so. Okay, now let's sharpen these vertices up, or these faces. And of course we're going to make them much smaller. Okay, now let's bring up, bring down these top chunks here. Like that. Okay, and then let's throw in a few loop cuts to sharpen things up a bit. Okay, I'm probably going to make these a little bit smaller still. And then we're just going to go and create the petals themselves. So let's just create, select this outline here. Hit Shift D, P, separate it by selection. Let's hide this guy here. And I'm actually going to delete those bottom edges. Not the face, the bottom edge. There we go. And select our vertices here. Bring them out. Bring them out and around. And kind of curve them. And then we can just close them up, like so. And if you want them to be solid, you can put those faces back in there. It'll all line up, I believe. And then it'll get all wonky with the normals, but that's not a problem. Let's make these a little bit longer. enough. And then these go all the way through. And then we'll just connect those bars up. Okay, so after you've got that, uh, first let's uh, close up the back here. But after you finish 
doing this and creating the bars. We will apply our mirror modifier. So let's create the bar first. So I want it right there on that top of that face. Let's create a new, actually let's tab into edit mode. Create a new cylinder. And eight vertices can do it. I might turn it up to 10. Let's turn down the number, or delete the caps. Scale that down. Ah, shoot. Deselect that pedal. And of course, if we had clipping turned on, let's turn off clipping. There we go. Take this and drag it back. Let's sharpen this edge up there. Another one up there. Okay. Set that whole thing to smooth. <clears throat> Actually, this should be a little bit balled out on the end here. And that's, that's okay. It'll look fine. We may want to bring down our edges a little bit, just to soften the end here. There we go. Okay. And then looks kind of like there's another box back here. So we can create that, not a problem. If I can select the right thing. So that'll be right in there. Create a new cube. Let's scale it down in edit mode. Okay. Bring it down, bring it out. Maybe back up a little bit. I'm actually going to delete those vertices and give it some fancy little adjustments. And of course we need to uh, scale this up along the X. Sharpen up those edges there. And then we have some faces to get rid of. Okay. Let's set this to smooth shading, and we still have a few more edges to throw in, like so. Okay. Then if we throw in a couple of loops there, we can close all this up for the most part, and have have it look pretty good. Okay, so let's unhide the piano. And that's looking fairly decent. Uh, we still have one more to do. So let's apply 
our mirror. Take this, hit, and our little bar thing here. Hit Control L, front view, hit Shift D to duplicate, and then sh just drag that over along the X. And now we've got a third bar, which of course I forgot about, so we need to get rid of this guy here. So let's fill those in. And that's looking pretty good. There we go. Just tightening up some stuff a little bit more. Right in like so. Ah, shoot. It gets a little bit difficult to tell what's going on, so... There we go. Pretty repetitive, but there we go. So now we've got three petals. Let's go and throw in these bars here. So sticking out of the back of these guys. Kind of right near there. Hit Shift S, cursor two selected. Let's bring in, let's actually use our old objects here. Tab in, scale that way down. Scale bring that down. Grab these vertices back here. G Y. Bring out along the Y. And let's delete that face there. Turn off clipping. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit, and now we're going to make bars. So these guys. I don't know what they look like from the front, but hopefully we do it right. So let's stay in edit mode here. Create a cylinder. Ten vertices is good. Scale that down a bit. There we go. Select that face there. Let's bring it down, and we have two options here. We can either just delete it, which I'm going to do, or we could just throw in a loop cut, which is what we are going to have to do up here. Let's just take this object here and actually scale it down a little bit. First though, a little more.
right there. Okay. Hit E. Let's extrude this out and up. And there we go. Let's sharpen up these edges here. Just drag that up. Like so. Set the whole thing to smooth shading. Set that to smooth shading. There are some petals there. We may want to play around with them more. Now let's do the caster wheels quickly. So take that foot base there. Let's hit Shift D, scale it up, bring that out. And that should be good. Let's bring it down along the Z. Maybe scale it in a little bit. That's a little bit large. And then hit E, and let's just, just extrude that in, like so. Sharpen those edges up there. It's good. And then really we're just going to connect everything up. So, now that we're down to where the wheel goes, E, S, let's bring that in. Let's connect these guys. Whoa. Now it's really starting to get a little bit intense here. Shift tab. My tab key seems to be not working. There we go. Fill that in. It's duplicating, which is cool. And what we want, now let's just extrude this out. And this is all going to be brass. Okay, and now let's do that. These guys right here. Let's extrude them down. Bring them in along the Y. These are what are going to hold our wheels in place. There we go. Something kind of like that. Okay. And if we run a loop cut there and there, maybe you want to do that. Maybe not. I don't want that. Let's get rid of that loop cut. There we go. And that one there too. Okay. We're getting there. So now that we've got that, um, let's actually, we're missing a loop cut. This one there. There we go. So now that we've got this guy, we just select those there. Those ones there. Hit cursor to selected. Tab. Make sure you're still in add mode. Create a new cylinder. Going to leave it, bring it up to 16 actually. Let's rotate it 90 degrees along the Y. Scale it down. This is going to be our wheel. It's a bit thin, but looks okay, I guess. And there we go. Pretty small wheel. I'm actually going to take the two faces off of our wheel here, just because they're too low poly. So let's just hit E, kind of, and then S Shift X, and then and then we can fill. Okay, so there is a caster. Two casters actually. Have to do the same thing to the back. So let's do that now. Let's see. Let's 
all one object. Oh, scale that in. Bring these up. Okay, scale this down. Pull these out along the Y. Ah. Line those up. And then we got to pull these in. Ah, <sighs> getting to be a bit of a long tutorial. And then let's just connect these across. Oops. Then our wheel's just going to go in that section there. And we should probably make sure that these are all aligned. So S, Y, 0. Oops. Oops. Select this edge there. SY zero. And then we get to do that to the X. So select, select SX zero. Oops, did I select something wrong? There we go. Okay, now we take those two edges here, extrude them out, and then we just put in a nice little wheel in there. So selection to cursor, or cursor to selection, sorry. Rotate along the X 90 degrees, scale that puppy down, Let's throw in a few loop cuts just to sharpen things up a bit. And then make sure that it can sit on the ground. There we go. That wheel is actually a bit too small. There we go. So there are our caster wheels. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to BlenderWiz.